You're listening to Bible Truth Feed, a podcast by Christadelphianvideo.org for Christadelphians and all those seeking the truth about the Bible message. Join us now as we present our latest episode. We're tracking, I suppose, the, the line of the patriarchs, those through whom God revealed the promises and who his chosen um, people came from. So, tonight it's Jacob, so Abraham's grandson, Isaac's son. This is what we're going to try and cover this evening in um, a bit of detail. So we're going to think about Jacob's birth and his character, um, Esau's birthright, uh, Esau being Jacob's brother, which we'll come to. The blessing of Isaac. Uh, we're going to see how Jacob ends up having to leave his home, and we'll see why that happens. How he marries um, he with his Jacob and Laban, which we'll come to. The 12 sons of Jacob. Now, when we get there, again, I don't know how much time I'll have to cover this in any great detail, but those sons of Jacob become very, very important as we go through the Old Testament. So they're sort of even if we don't take great detail this evening, they're worth taking note of. Um, and how his name is changed, uh, the 12th son, and Jacob's burial. So, here we are with a family tree which you may or may not be familiar with. We've got, uh, who we've already discussed very briefly, we've got Abraham, and then Abraham's children, Ishmael and Isaac. And remember, we're, we're tracking that line of the seed of promise. So it goes through Abraham and then Isaac. So we've got Isaac who marries Rebecca and then their sons Esau and Jacob. And so that's that, that family tree that we're seeing going through Abraham, Isaac, and then down to, to Jacob. So yeah, tonight we're going to go from, uh, you'll see down there, Beersheba um, up to Haran. And then by the end of the night, we'll be back again in Beersheba. So <laughs> we've got a lot of ground to cover. Um, okay. So we need to find, if you've got your, uh, your Bibles there in front of you, Genesis, and we're going to be really in Genesis uh, chapter 25. Um, so we're thinking about Isaac, who has married Rebecca, um, and then we know that they were to have children. And of course they need to have children because that was the way in which the God's promises were going to be able to continue. But as we'll see as we go through you know, so much of the Bible, God speaks to his chosen ones and makes prophecies about them. So the reference that we've got there on the screen is from Genesis chapter 25, and it's verse 23. I don't know. So here we've got Rebecca, who is being given a promise. And what does it sort of tell us? Who can summarise what that promise is that's given? An older one serving a younger one. What does that tell us was in her womb? Twins. They were twins, OK? So there were twins... Uh, in her womb, and they were to become two separate nations, both sort of great people, I suppose, individually in their, uh, in their own right. But we're told that the elder will serve the younger, and that's some of the bits that we'll pick up uh, as we go through this evening. Um, and so as the chapter continues, um, we read about their birth, um, as it's described on here, somewhat strange birth. Um, so that's describing for us the birth, the, the unusual circumstances of their birth. Who is it that comes out first? It's Esau that comes out first. And so we can start to think then of the prophecy that was given about the older serving the younger. Who is it that comes out second? Jacob. Jacob. Okay. Um, and notice in verse 26, his hand is on Esau's heel. So he's ready there to... Um, his name means supplanter, which I think we'll cover in a few minutes, and he's there ready to sort of take Esau's place. Yeah. So that's the you know, unusual circumstances of their birth. We'll see that Esau is, is all over like a hairy garment. So he's come out as this very, very hairy baby in contrast uh, to Jacob. And so you know, as they grow up, we'll see that they are they're different uh, types of people. Verse 27, right? Okay, so we can see there, there's the, the difference in their, in their characteristics. Esau seems to be a man that his father really uh, loved and respected. He was out there um, hunting, doing all the things that dad wanted him to do. 
Whereas Rebecca there, we're told, loved Jacob. He had seemingly more of a, a faithful spirit about him, a quiet and faithful spirit. Um, and Rebecca loved that aspect of him. However, we know that I, Jacob is going to end up taking this role of Esau as the firstborn. And so that's what we see described as we come to the end of the chapter. So we're getting to read a nice bit of the chapter here, which is good. Um, Paul, if you're able to, um, would you mind reading, let's go from 29, well, why not just go down to the, uh, to the end of the chapter, if that's all right. So very quickly, you know, in the next few verses, obviously there's a bit of time that's passed between birth and, and this point here, but what has Jacob been able to do in fulfilment of that prophecy? Yeah, gain the birthright and sort of begin to take that role of the elder serving the younger. At this time, the birthright was, was an important thing. I suppose it's not been that long ago in our country that it was the case that that inheritance would pass on to the eldest son, and that, you know, that was an extremely important thing. And it was a similar circumstance here. But what did it tell us about um, how, J how Esau thought about this? What, did, what was at the end of verse 34? Well, how does it describe Esau? Yeah, he despised it. Think about the great blessings that have gone through Abraham and Isaac, Okay, that idea of becoming a great nation, of your seed being like you know, the stars of heaven. And Esau here is despising it. He's, he's not bothered about it. Um, it's always interesting when we see our Old Testament characters talked about in the New. And we're just going to have a little look now uh, in Hebrews and chapter 12. So um, if you just find for me Hebrews and chapter 12. Um, now, it's interesting to see it come up in chapter 12. Chapter 11 of Hebrews is, a, is an interesting chapter because it talks all about some of the, the faithful people we get in the Old Testament, um, including Isaac and Jacob. Uh, but in chapter 12, we're just given a little bit of a comment on, on Esau. So it's page 1706, Hebrews chapter 12, um, and verse 16. Um, I wonder whether, Sean, are you all right to read for us? Yeah. Um, could you just read from verse 14 down to verse 16, please? That's great, yeah, thank you. So this is what the New Testament, God writing in the New Testament, has to say about Esau. And it's very similar to what we saw in Genesis, isn't it? We saw there that he despised his birthright. Here we're told that he was a profane person, a fornicator, and didn't really care, you know, just for a bit of food. He was prepared to, to sort of get rid of his part in those promises, the great promises that were given. Um, I think in my, in my human brain, and all my brain is human actually, but that's, that side of me, it feels a bit sorry for Esau in some respects because, ah, oh, you know, Jacob takes this important thing off him. But actually, that's not the way the Bible looks at it at all. The Bible says that actually he didn't care about it. Um, and so, you know, that was his attitude. So we shouldn't feel sorry. I shouldn't feel sorry for him. Actually, he should have... Uh, been a more godly individual. So, yeah, just Jacob cared for the things of the promises, Esau didn't. And that really then comes up um, in the next, oh, I don't think it's quite the next chapter actually. Um, so back in Genesis, um, we need to get on to chapter 27. Um, and really there's an awful lot that goes on in this, in this chapter. But we get into the stage of Isaac's life where he was going to be dying and wanted to pass on the blessing to his, his firstborn son. Now at the time, it still seems in his mind like Esau was the one who should be being blessed. Um, Sam, are you able to just read for, uh, read for us probably verses, uh, so it's chapter 27, verses 1, and, 1 to th 4, I suppose. If you don't. Okay, so Isaac now. The father of Jacob and Esau is getting old, wants to pass on the blessing. And who is it that he says, go and, go and cook something for me so that I can give you the blessing? It's Esau. Okay, the one who actually we know was a godless person who was, wasn't really worried about that sort of thing, um, we're told. Esau was the hunter. Esau was the hunter, yeah. That's right. And his father loved that, didn't he? However, and we just haven't got the time to cover this in any great detail, the, the chapter continues and tells us that Rebecca hears this. Now, Rebecca, we know, loves Jacob and also knows, actually, it should be Jacob who is the one that gets the blessing. Remember, that's the prophecy that's being given to her. 
So she goes about it in another way and really it seems works together with, with Isaac to deceive uh, sorry, work together with Jacob to deceive Isaac. And that's a bit of a, an interesting thing to consider as to whether the ends justify the means. Um, but in this case, it was in God's plan that it was to work out this way. That's all, that's all I can uh, say here, really. Um, and so we see that in the end, Jacob is the one who ends up being blessed. You know, there's, when you read the chapter, you'll see there's a number of de deceptions that take place. He puts... Hair, puts you know, uh, goat skin on his arms to make him seem more hairy. He, he cooks the stew. He knows what's going to be going on here. But ultimately, it was Jacob who was to receive the blessing, and it was Jacob who ended up being blessed, you know, at the cost of Esau. Um, and if we just uh, read verse 28 down to, well, 28 and 29, please. Okay, so that's the blessing that's given, and we might just notice some of the language that's there about from the promise that's given to Abraham back in Genesis 12. We pick that out about, you know, curse be everyone who curses you and bless be everyone that blesses you. So it was right that this blessing went to Jacob because that was the line that God had chosen for the promises to go through. Um, and, you know, ultimately that's how that, this little bit of the story ends with um, Jacob being blessed and... Esau, although it does get uh, some uh, sort of blessing, it's not the, the blessing that he had hoped to receive. Um, now, I'm just going to whiz through this slide that's on here. It talks about some of the things I was just mentioning a few moments ago. Was Jacob in the wrong? Um, so Esau had sold the birthright. So was it right, therefore, of Esau to expect the, the blessing that was going to come? Well, possibly not, because he knew that some years earlier he had sold it. Um, there's no record of God or Isaac rebuking Jacob for what takes place, even though there is some underhandedness going on here. There's no, uh, no rebuke which comes. Again, we've seen what the New Testament says about Esau, that he was a godless person. Um, he didn't understand its importance, and so, you know, didn't want the blessing that was going to come with it. Um, and we see that um, Esau did end up a rich man in the end, okay, but didn't have the, the blessings that were going to, to come. Okay. Now I think, Dave, yeah. it's you. <clears throat> okay, so, thanks Tim. We've, we've then thought about these two brothers um, and how there was uh, perhaps an unrest within the family, should we say. Um, the, the father was given the blessings to, to the, the younger brother. The older brother, therefore, would not be happy with that. So what Isaac did was he sent uh, Jacob away. Um, you see on the screen here, in verse uh, chapter 28, if we, if we can read those. Um, chapter 28. <clears throat> so this is when Isaac calls to Jacob, and he blessed him and said to him, um, in verse 1, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Okay, so Tim, could you just then read... Uh, well, maybe verses 2 to 4 of chapter 28, please. Yep, so Genesis 28, verse 2. Arise, go to Paden Aram, to the house of Bethuel, your mother's father, and take yourself a wife from there of the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. May God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and multiply you, that you may be an assembly of peoples, and give you the blessing of Abraham to you and your descendants with you, that you may inherit the land in which you are a stranger, which God gave to Abraham. So if we quickly go back to this family tree, we can see the names that we looked at. So what did I say? He said, go back to the house of Bethuel and go to the, basically the, the family of Laban. Okay, so you can see how these names now come into play. So <clears throat> what we do see here, again, as, as, as Tim has already mentioned, we'd, we'd see the reiteration of some of the promises given to Abraham. And a little bit like with the promises to Abraham, he, God didn't give them all in one go, did he? There was a number of stages in the life of Abraham where he got more promises. The more faithful that he was, the more promises that he had. Okay? And, and it's a similar into, in Jacob's life. You know, there was the blessings that Isaac gave to him. And we'll see in just a moment that, that these blessings continue. Okay, so this is the promise then, uh, promises to Abraham. 
that would then go through Isaac and then would go through Jacob and not through Esau. And we see there where we started in Beersheba, uh, and you see the journey that through the land of Israel, um, or the land of Canaan it was at the time. Okay, so Jacob sets off from Beersheba, arrives at Luz. So, what happened at Luz? Does anyone know what happened at Luz? So what happens is, as um, Jacob sets off um, for Padan Aram from Beersheba, uh, he comes to this place called Luz. Um, <clears throat> and it's classed here that it's an extraordinary experience. What happens is he, he lays down to sleep, uh, lays down with his head on some stones uh, as a pillow, and he had a dream. And we, we see this, don't we, a number of times in, in, in the Bible where there are certain dreams or visions that people have. And some of these are very, very significant uh, and are recorded for us. So... What happens is he dreams of this great ladder with angels ascending and descending uh, on that ladder. And at the top of that, he sees the Lord stood at the top of the ladder. And we read then what the words are that are given to him. So let's just read those. So that's Genesis chapter 28 and verse 13 to 15. <clears throat> we can see then in those, those words, going all the way back to Genesis chapter 12, when God gave the promises to Abraham. Let me just read that to you. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So we see the reiteration then of the promises that um, were given to Abraham through to Isaac, and now are being given to Jacob. So this isn't from Isaac, this is coming from God. Okay, so we see then the family line is, is strengthened by the fact that God's also reiterating these. Okay? You can also look at this in a way that you can go, well... Was Jacob, you know, did he deceive? Did, did he do wrong? And actually, this is God saying the promises are gone to you. So this isn't a, you shouldn't have done that. This isn't a rebuke. This is a, you've now got these, these, these blessings. And it perhaps changes our mindset of what happened in the previous chapter that, uh, that Tim was talking about with, with the birthright. But we see here that the prophecy, you know, really has come true. It, this is... This is the, the younger being blessed uh, above the elder. Okay, so we can see then the promises um, that were given to Abraham are reiterated uh, to Jacob. Um, we've got up to the fact that Jacob was going on a journey. He had a dream, um, and that place was called Luz. Uh, we see here in Genesis 28, we'll skip through this quickly as we've uh, got a lot to get through this evening. So Genesis 28, verse 17 to 19. It says, that, or Jacob says, how dreadful is this place? Now, that dreadful doesn't mean how bad this place is. There are some words which sometimes sound um, like it's a bad place, but it means kind of a reverence. It's a, this is a, a special place. Um, and you can get that word, that, like, for example, the fear of God. It doesn't mean we're scared of God. Yeah. It means that we, we're reverencing him. So this is a, this is a reverential statement. Um, and it says, this is the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven, referencing the, the ladder that he, he dreamed of. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had for his pillow and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on the top of it, and he called the place Bethel. So Bethel, a bit, bit of Hebrew here. Does anyone know what Bethel means? House. Of, so Beth is house. So, and El is... Bethlehem means house of bread. Bethel Perfect. So house. exactly. So Bethel is, so is house, house of, of God, house of God. Exactly right. Uh, okay. So let's move on. Um, what's God? Okay. So so then Jacob uh, continues and it comes to Haran. You can see here. Uh, hopefully you can see it up. He's travelled up here and he's now up in this area, which is where Laban, his uncle, lived. But as he as he um, approached, and we see this quite a few times, that as he approached. The, the, the location where they're going to go, and we see this in Moses and we saw it with Isaac as well. Um, as he approached to where they were going, he, he, he saw uh, Rachel, who was the daughter of Laban. So that would have been his, his cousin. It's, it's his, yeah. yeah, we've got that. We've got his mum's brother's daughter. So this is, this is Rachel. Um, and he, he, they have the conversation, and uh, Rachel takes Jacob back to Laban to, to meet the family and introduce them, etc. Uh, now, Jacob loved Rachel. She was a beautiful, beautiful woman. 
She also had a sister called uh, Leah, who was described as having a weak and delicate eyes. And I've had many discussions about what that means. The up side of the whole conversation is that he loved Rachel and wasn't as uh, intrigued in the beauty of, of, of Leah. Should we, should we leave it at that? Okay. So Rachel was gorgeous. She was beautiful, uh, and obviously Jacob uh, had, his, had his heart set on her. Now, there is, uh, there is a, a study you could do, and we'll skip over this evening, and I think it's, it's, in, it's in, your, uh, in your sheets anyway, of how old Jacob was. Now, as we have these you know, four, three or four chapters since we've read about Jacob, we, we probably in our mind's eye don't think of him being too old. Um, there's there's, there's, there's uh, evidence that he's probably around 70-ish at this point. Yeah. Which, you know, that's, that, that's kind of by the by in some ways, but it's sometimes useful to put in our, our minds as to how old some of these, these, uh, these people are at the time. It also perhaps changes your mindset of how people would react. You know, when we're young, we may be impulsive, we may react in a different way, whereas when we're slightly older and a bit more mature, and we kind of perhaps think, take things at a different, uh, a different pace. But we'll come back to that uh, in a minute. So what happens is that um, Jacob says that he will work for uh, Laban um, for seven years for the hand of his daughter. Okay. So, he worked for seven years for the hand of marriage um, of Rachel. However, there is a, a theme in some of these chapters about deception. And what we see is that Laban uh, wasn't particularly honest uh, with this agreement. Do you want to read 21? Uh, so, Genesis 29, verses 20... 21 to 23, please. 21. Bit of an odd evening for Jacob. Uh, it's perhaps an understatement. <laughs> but he basically, he'd worked for seven years, uh, and he <clears throat> was expecting Rachel. Um, there was a big feast. It was dark. However it happened in the morning, the weak he, didn't weak, he didn't notice the weak eyes, no. Uh, in the morning, he realized it was, uh, it was Leah, um, and goes to Laban, going, what have you done? And Laban said, well, that's what happens in this society is that you, you marry the elder first. You know, kind of, didn't you know, type thing. Yeah. So there was some deception here. Okay, so what happens then is um, Jacob, agrees, um, Jacob agrees to marry, uh, work for another seven years for Rachel. So for 14 years, uh, Jacob was working for Laban for his two wives. Yeah, it's, it's quite, a, quite a long time. He also gets given two handmaids. Leah had a handmaid, a handmaid of Zilpah, which was what we just read, and Rachel had a handmaid called Bilhah. Okay, so he basically had two wives and two handmaids. Okay? And he's been, he was basically working with Laban for, for 20 years. Now, so we've talked about Abraham, we've talked about Isaac, and we've talked about Jacob over the past few weeks. Jacob then has 12 sons. We can see here on the screen, and hopefully you've got a grid in front of you. Um, and it basically shows you, in the order of who is who's given birth, so we can see one is Reuben, two is Simeon, three is Levi. So Leah has three children, four children, uh, before any other children uh, for, for Jacob. Now, Rachel couldn't have children to start with. And then there was therefore friction between the two, two, two wives, as to you know, trying to give the, the heir to the, to, the, to, the, to the man, I guess you could say. We, we won't go too much into this, so I guess we'll cover this uh, in, in future weeks, but essentially these 12 are um, the sons of Jacob, and they become the 12 tribes of Israel. So if you just hold that in your mind for the future weeks, um, those are the 12 tribes which you'll come out of uh, Egypt and go back into the land. And that's where you see the 12 tribes of Israel back in the land. And it all comes from this one family and these 12 children. Okay? So what happens then after um, 
11 of these sons and a lot of cattle around the age of 97 um, back Jacob goes um, after working for Laban for so, for so many years he realised that he should go back uh, to, uh, to to see Esau I guess um, Jacob um, was a good worker they became very prosperous with Laban uh, so Jacob was very he, he, he was obviously blessed God looked after him and the, the flocks grew. Laban became obviously very rich from that and he wouldn't have wanted Jacob to go. Uh, and there's a whole other story around him trying to leave. Um, but we won't go into that too much. Um, I think... Tim, is this my last line, I think? Is that right? Yeah, that's fine, yeah. Yeah, should keep going. Um, so what happens is, um, as Jacob leaves Haran... Uh, or Haran, however you want to pronounce it, um, he's, he wants to go back and he wants to reconcile back with Esau. Now, that wouldn't have been an easy thing. He's had a good number of years away from seeing Esau. The last time he would have seen him, it, you know, they weren't particularly friends, were they? If, if you can look at it like that. Um, exactly right. So he really should have been the, the one with the birthright, but he sold it uh, for that morsel of food. Okay? Uh, but he did send gifts. He sent gifts perhaps to to soften um, the, the, the relationship. Maybe it was a, a way of trying to, to, to bridge that gap that they had um, when, when they left. So he, sent, he also then split all of his goods and his wives, he split them into two. So if anything did go uh, horribly wrong with one group, he still didn't lose everything. So he took some measures, uh, obviously very nervous about meeting, um, meeting his brother. And we can go and look at Hosea where he says, And he took his brother by the heel of the womb, and by his strength and his power with God, yea, he had power over the angel and prevailed. So we see that God was with Jacob, um, and as he comes to meet Esau, um, perhaps it wasn't as bad as he thought it was going to be, uh, and actually it was, it was a, nice, uh, a nice meet. Okay, thanks Dave. So, um, we've already looked a little bit about the idea of names, um, and how they have meanings. Um, and so we saw with Bethel, for example, we had um, the idea of the house of God, didn't we? A little while ago, probably like 45 minutes ago, we talked about what Jacob's name meant. Remember what Jacob's name meant? Probably been your, uh, back in your notes somewhere, but it was the idea of being a supplanter. He was the one that was going to take and supplant Esau, who was the, who was the firstborn, okay? And we're just going to see now how Jacob's name is changed from being supplanter to something else. Now, uh, the, the slides have already referred to this, this idea that as Jacob is coming down and Esau is going up and they're going to meet each other, there is this wrestling that takes place. Um, so it's Genesis chapter 32, if you'll find that in your, in your Bibles. It's chapter 32, verses 24 through to 28, if that. There we go. So, big change there. He's gone from being supplanter, Jacob, to what's his name being changed to? Israel. Israel. Now think about how important that is in the context of the rest of the Bible. Yeah. How Jacob now is being given the name of Israel. And you'll see on the screen there, what does his name mean? What does Israel mean? Prince with God. Prince with God. What a change that is. Okay, to go from being a supplant to someone who takes someone else's place now to being given this elevated position of being prince with God. And so we'll see, you know, Dave mentioned about the sons that Jacob has, the 12 tribes, they become known as the tribes of Israel. And of course, you know, we read an awful lot in the Bible about Israel being God's chosen people. It comes from Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. Um, there was also a reference on a... Um, a previous slide, I'm just going to read to you from Hosea 12, no need to turn there, but this is describing what we've seen this evening. It says, he took his brother by the heel in the womb, well this is talking about Jacob, isn't it, taking hold of Esau's heel, and in his strength he struggled with God, yes he struggled and with the angel and prevailed. So although it's described as being a man in Genesis, here we see that it's an angel that he's struggling with, he's, he's wrestling with. Um, he wept and sought favour from him. Now, here he is wrestling with an angel. 
But something happens to, um, to Jacob as part of this, this fight, this wrestling. Um, and that comes down in verse um, 31 down to 32, I think. Sean, are you in, uh, in Genesis 32? Okay, so we've got this, this um, wound, I suppose, that Jacob incurs during uh, this struggle. He's, his hip is put out of joint. We saw it back there um, in verse 25. So although there is a blessing that comes to Jacob as part of this wrestling, that his name is changed um, to Israel, we also see that he's given a bit of a problem that would, I suppose, he would be reminded of this event now for the rest of his life, the fact that he's now, um, I guess he would walk with a limp because of what takes place. But you know, as ever, these things don't happen by accident. Um, and we're thinking now about how this idea of him halting, as it's described here, who are walking with a limp, is picked up in a future prophecy. Okay? And it's a prophecy of the return of Israel. So I know in our, um, it was with a couple of weeks ago, wasn't it, with, with Mike, there was a talk that talk, looked at the return of Israel and how they were going to be blessed by God. Well, just look at this reference that comes up. I think this is worth turning up. This is in Micah chapter 4, if you can uh, find that in your Bibles. Um, I mean, if you do, fantastic, because it's tiny and somewhere at the end of your Old Testament. But it, you know, it's chapter 4, and it's verses 6 and 7. Now, there's a, a lot going on here. Um, you know, these prophecies that we read in the Old Testament, they... They talk about things that happened a long time ago. They talk about things that are going to happen in the future, even from now. But just notice how these things are sort of woven into the record of the Bible, that something happens back in Genesis, and it's now being picked up in a, in a tiny little book later on in the Old Testament. It just really emphasizes the fact that this is a book which is, is written by God. So um, it's Micah chapter 4 um, and verses 6 and 7, I think. Okay, so this idea of the lameness, the one who halted, it's Jacob, it's Israel. And this is who this prophecy is talking about. And we, we perhaps know a bit about the, the history of Israel, how they have been outcasts, they've been afflicted. And yet always there has been a remnant. There have always been a remnant of God's people Israel, as we've got there in verse 7. Um, but his God, God is going to make that remnant a strong nation but the way in which he describes them here is the description of the being lame or someone who is halting and that's just a reference just a link back to what we've just read back there in Genesis how that Jacob had his heart had his hip put out he's someone that limps someone that halts and then we come right forward into Micah and we see a prophecy here which picks up on those same ideas so you know, amazing things really but um, just gives you a bit of a flavour, really, of some of the things that the Bible is able to, to pick up and bring out for us. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's just a little bit of an insight into, you know, a future prophecy about Israel and their return. But really, it links back with, you know, the record that we're considering this evening from Genesis, which is, you know, a few thousand years ago. Okay, I'm going to just whiz through these last little bits. So, Jacob completes his journey. After meeting with Esau, he sets off west. He calls again at Bethel, that we looked at earlier, the house of God, and God repeats those promises again to him there. Now, he then stops at Bethlehem, which I think, again, David referred to earlier, the house, of, was it, the house of bread. The house of bread. Yeah. Um, and it's there that there is the twelfth son. So I think, I don't know if you noticed when Dave uh, mentioned earlier, there were eleven sons who were born up in, in Haran. And it's not until you get down to um, here in, in Bethlehem that the twelfth is born, Benjamin, but that comes at a cost because in the, in the process of giving birth, his, his loved wife, really, Rachel, uh, dies. And so, um, you know, Rachel, of those twelve sons, only bore two. Joseph, who we'll be picking up on, uh, I expect, and then and Benjamin as well. Okay, and there you go, his name, Benjamin, son of my right hand. Okay, right, overview, here we go. Buys birthright, flees from Esau, we get the vision of the ladder in Bethel, marries Leah and Rachel, 11 sons born, 
works 20 years for Laban, he meets Esau, Benjamin born, and then returns to be with Isaac. Which is strange, isn't it? Because actually at the time that they were blessed, Isaac said, I'm ready to die. But actually, that ha he hasn't died yet. There's still, uh, still more to come. Okay. And here, Jacob insisted that when he die, his body should be returned to Canaan and buried with Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Rebekah, and Leah. And so that was where his hopes for the future were. We talk about the promised land, okay, the land that God has chosen. That was the land that Jacob loved as well. He wanted to make sure that he was buried there. Okay, and so the hope of the true Christian also centered in that land where God will implement the fulfillment of the promises to Abraham, the promises that were also given to Isaac, also given to Jacob, as we've been looking at this evening. Thank you for joining us. We hope you found the episode helpful. Don't forget, most of these episodes are also available as videos on our video channel, cdvideo.org. So head over and take a look. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions, please get in touch or leave us a voice message. We love to hear your feedback. You can email us at bt f at cdvideo.org If you enjoyed the episode, then please share it with others. Until next time, may God bless you in your studies and your walk towards God's kingdom. Amen.